everybody who comes to the church, including the Pope, is, is a sinner. Preachers and their members who say we are all sinners, we are human, that's how we are living in sin, they have not even stepped their feet here. No one in church is actually perfect. Many preachers that people are listening to are not even on the path to the true room. They are on the path to hell. I accept prostitutes, I accept drug dealers, I accept uh, nude people. I, I you accept, don't even know who they are. I don't know who they, who they are. are. Christians who listen to them can never find the true room. They will never operate on earth as God's watchers on the face of the earth. No one in church is without sin. Now, sin is living in us, but not everybody is living in sin. All of us are sinners. He who sins is of the devil. He who lives in sin is of the devil. Right. The yes. church is full of sinners. You are not supposed to keep living in sin after you have met Jesus. Advocating for sinless perfectionism is great hypocrisy. When you are living in sin and say we are all sinners, nobody can be perfect, you are taking your moral character and values from the devil. The church is full of sinners. There are pastors that are second in command of, of Satan. Adulterers, liars, fornicators. The woman that was caught in adultery, what did Jesus tell her? Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He didn't say go and continue sinning. The mantra, the theology that tells you you cannot be perfect, you cannot be that, you cannot be that, is actually telling you, you cannot be part of the church because Jesus is coming to rid a bride without spot or wrinkle. Everybody on earth is either a second in command to Satan or a second in command to God. You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. These are days for holy prophets of God. Both on the pulpit and on the pew. Prophets not by title, but by content carriers of the spirit of prophecy. Are you understanding me? Are you understanding me? So, as soon as you match your foot here, what is in the throne room is deployed to you. The mercy of God, the holiness of God, and the fury of God will be around your life. So no devil will come near your dwelling. You begin to enjoy peace. That's, that's the meaning of righteousness and peace have met. You begin to enjoy peace because, and begin to walk a life of righteousness because His holiness has clothed you. So this is where sin will not have dominion over you. Because the holiness of God have met you. So when you get here, you will not be saying, we are all sinners. We are all sinners are for people who have not even stepped their feet here. Preachers and their members who say we are all sinners, we are human, that's how we are living in sin. They have not even stepped their feet here. That now tells you that many preachers that people are listening to are not even on the path to the true room. They are on the path to hell. They are the broad way that leads to destruction. That's why... Christians who listen to them can never find the throne room. They will never operate on earth as God's watchers on the face of the earth. They are, can I tell you a secret? That army of prophets we are talking about is an army of God's watchers. Part of, I wish I have time to tell you, okay, maybe, 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 maybe on Friday night. Okay, no, Friday night, something we want to look at. Maybe I will have shown you the seven kind of ministries that this army of prophets will be involved in. One of which we are going to function as God's watchers on the face of the earth. This decision is by the decree of the watchers. We pass decrees seated here with the Lord and they are executed on earth as written in heaven. That would be one of our assignments as God's entire army of prophets. Elijah stood as a watcher of God over Israel, networked with Michael, who is, oh, sorry, Gabriel, who is over Israel. He networked with Gabriel. Because in the throne room, there are angels assigned to different nations. So, for instance, we are here in Kenya and we find our place here in the throne room. So, we network with the angels of God in Kenya to make sure Baal don't take root in the hearts of men. If we find our place here, if we live the life that God wants us to live, that's what I'm talking about. And those other places, you see, nations that do not have watchers will, will be overrun by devils. Nations that do not have watchers will be overrun by devil. That is why when there was uh, the election the last time they came and they were saying that uh, all the foreigners were running away, they now say, you're not going to go. And I asked them, how do you ask the gate man to leave the gate? How can I run away from Kenya because people are afraid that there will be election violence? Me, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. You don't ask gate man to leave the gate. 
Watchers don't run away when people are running, running away. God is calling you and I to become watchers. But we cannot be watchers sitting on the bench and say, eh, 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 I'm a deacon, I'm a dad. Shut up. Locate the pathways. You cannot be a watcher and say, we are all sinners. We are all sinners. You know, we are humans. We are, you are not a watcher. You, your feet is not here even. You now see spiritual leaders leading multitude of people whose feet are not even on the first step that leads to the throne room. They are not even on the first step. The first step of the pathways that leads to the throne. They are not even there. Come to take us, come to talk of being in the throne room. That is why in their churches, there's always deliverance from this demon, scandals here, all kinds of nonsense. Because the three atmospheres of God's throne is not in their lives. So to them, sin is a way of life. Sin is a way of life. Are you understanding me? So this is very, very important. So for us to find the throne, the pathways that lead to the throne, the spirit of the Lord must live in our lives. The spirit of the Lord who sits on the throne must be in our lives for us to uncover the pathways that lead to the throne. Do not forget what I'm saying. The spirit of the Lord who owns the throne must be in our lives. Don't joke about it. Don't replace it with olive oil. Don't replace it with another spirit. There are a lot of unclean spirits today calling themselves Jesus in the life of many Christians. Prophesying nonsense, anti-scriptural prophecies. And you call them people of God. It's sad. I think that's what we should be dealing with. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll get into that. But let me hear from I you. Think, I think I need to also add on to what uh, uh, Pastor Kefe is saying or Bishop Kefe is saying. Uh, my brother here, uh, I think, uh, needs to understand uh, proper theology. Yes, I mean. And proper theology advocates for when people are called out, the ecclesia of Jesus Christ. Ecclesia is the Greek of the called out ones we don't advocate and jesus never even advocated for seamless perfectionism he is advocating for seamless perfectionism no one in church is actually perfect mm -hmm. no one in church is without sin the bible says he that is without sin actually should be the first one even to cast out the stone yes. he says we know that we have sins and if we confess our sins he's talking to the church he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. Advocating for sinless perfectionism is great hypocrisy. Absolutely. Well, well, let me tell you something. We, we must understand, he said ecclesia. That's a Greek word. Call at once. That is church. Called out from where? Called out from sin. That is it. You are not supposed to keep living in sin after you have met Jesus. Listen to me. There is, there is, there is living in sin. There is sin living in you. Now, sin is living in us, but not everybody is living in sin. You get my point? We are born of sin. That's what I'm saying. Sin is living in everyone, but not everyone is living in sin. Yeah, because most is. of us have received the power of the Holy Spirit not to live in sin. Okay. Though sin is in us, but we don't live in it because the Holy Ghost has, been, has empowered us not to live in it. That is why when the, the woman that was caught in adultery, what did Jesus tell her? Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He didn't say go and continue sinning. You see the kind of grace gospel that has been preached today, it destroyed the life of people. There have to be the second coming of the church before we have the second coming of the Lord. If there's no second coming of the church, there will be no second coming of the Lord. The second coming of the church was described by Paul in Ephesians, talking about a glorious church without spots or wrinkles. Sons of Solomon saw it as an army with banners, clear as the sun, fair as the moon, terrible as an army with banners. So that is why the mantra and the theology that tells you we cannot be perfect, we cannot be that, we cannot be that, is actually telling you you cannot be part of the church. Because Jesus is coming to reap a bride without spot or wrinkle. So, so what has happened is that people who gave their life to Christ, quote and unquote, did not end up in Zion, they end up in Babylon. We left Egypt, we didn't get to Zion, we got to Babylon, we copied the system of the world and the uh, God is now saying, I will stretch forth my hand a second time. The first time he stretched forth his hand was in Egypt. 
he sent Moses the prophetic finger to bring Israel out. The second time he's going to stretch forth his hands to bring us out of the systems of Babylon, he will use the prophetic and the apostolic finger to bring us back to the place of being without spot or wrinkle. By now, you should know that you don't go to church to solve your problem. You go to church to receive a keeping to become what God has called you to be. God will deliver you from having problems to solve to being conscious of solving other people's problems. That is when you become the star of the kingdom. Are you understanding me? That is your destination. Your problems should not be your focus for living. Other people's problems should be the focus. Why am I here in the kingdom? The church is full of sinners. The church is full of sinners. Everybody who comes to the church, including the Pope, is, is a sinner. The Bible says all of us have fallen short of the glory of, yes. the glory of yes. God yes. and have sinned. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 8 and from verse 1. And so all of us are sinners. Okay. We come there simply because of the mercy we need to be and the treated grace. Right. Yeah. Once sonship is restored back, you see no Satan with two levels. But once you are still a slave of sin, you are number five slaves of sin so you can see why believers suffer what we suffer that is why this statement of we are all sinners nobody can be perfect are very destructive statements they keep people under the slavery of sin they keep people under the slavery of sin People keep practicing a life of sin and wickedness, saying we are all sinners. Nobody can be perfect. Actually, you are simply saying, let's remain in rank number five. Where the devil can, can do anything he wants to do with us. It is people who are in rank, rank who are falling to this point. Thank God for the grace of God. Remember, five is a number of grace. So grace comes here to take you up and bring you to number two. So, but those who resist the grace of God who keep living in sin and wickedness, they are in rank number five. Now, look at, you are under the devil. Where is it in the Bible? I read it before to you. Look, okay. Go to 1 John. Let me read it again. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He who sins is of the devil. He who lives in sin is of the devil. Let me read from the Amplified so that you get it better. Let's read from the Amplified Bible. This is not classic edition. This is another edition of the Amplified. I wish I'm going to buy classic edition because I love, I love classic edition so much. But this one is also very beautiful. It, it has helped us. Now, look at what he said. The one, 1 John 3, 8, the one who practiced sin, separating himself from God and offering himself by acts of disobedience, indifference or rebellion, is of the devil and take his inner character and moral value from him, not God. So when you are living in sin and say we are all sinners, nobody can be perfect, you are taking your moral character and values from the devil. That is why you are on beneath him. That is why you are beneath him. Now, let me read that scripture again. It says, he who practices sin is of the devil and takes his inner character and moral values from him not of god not god so if your inner character and moral value is from the devil you will occupy point number i mean rank number five which is a rank of darkness because look at where light stops light stops here L light light stops here look at light this is light this is darkness so when you are living a life of sin you are in darkness do you know what is in darkness death and destruction hell grave they are in darkness 
So death and destruction are in darkness and you are living in darkness. You are rank number two after Satan and his fallen angels. That's why if you die that way, they torment you in hell. You are their subject. Now, look at what the devil is trying to achieve. Remember, his vision has always been to become like the Most High, to become like Elohim. That is why we have the Trinity of Satan. I've taught you before what the Trinity of Satan is, just as we have the Trinity of God. Elohim is three persons in one God. So Satan wanted to be like Elohim. Now watch this. So if you look at Elohim, mankind is second in command to Elohim. So when you now begin to live in sin, when you take your moral character, when you take what the, what the Bible calls your inner character and moral values from the devil, you become second in command to Satan. So he, he can use you to execute his agenda on earth and ruin the purposes of God because you are second in command to him. But when you get back to your sonship, you become a son of God who does not live in sin, who, who is fight against sin, fight against loss, fight against pride. When your body moves you to go and commit sin, you fight against it with praying and fasting, with separation unto God. The Bible says you have not resisted against sin with blood strike, even with blood striving. That means you build a a strong resistance against sin through intensive seeking the face of God. You are a son if you do like that. Now, you cannot be a second in command to Satan. You'll be a second in command to Elohim. And Satan cannot come near you. That's the meaning of 1 John chapter 5. I told you before. The wicked one cannot touch you because it's, it's number, number four. But if you now live in sin, your inner character and your moral value comes from the devil. You are second in command to Satan. So he can use you to do anything. The human beings that are part of the army of Satan, they are, second, they are second in command of the devil. They are pastors that are second in command of, of Satan. Adulterers, liars, fornicators, thieves, or they are second in command. They live in lies, they live in adultery, live in lies, live in fornication, live in all kinds of immoral lives, and they say we are all sinners. They are second in command to Satan. If you are living in sin and saying you are all, we are all sinners, that we can, nobody can be perfect. You are second in command to second. In fact, in fact, a lot of prophets and prophetess, they are sexually perverse. They are lesbians and gays. And yet they are prophets. They are second in command to Satan. That's why you see their prophetic ministry does not build a, a, a temple for God in the spirit. It only establishes assemblies of Satan wherever they go. Because they are second in command to the enemy. I'm going to see a lot of stuff here. So let me just rewrite this. All of you believers who live in sin and say we are all sinners, you are second in command to Satan. Any church you worship, that church is in danger because you are second in command to Satan. Especially if the church make you a leader. You are making a second in command to Satan, your leader. If, if, the, if the man is your papa, your spiritual father, you have made a second in command to Satan, your spiritual father. So why wouldn't you be having spirit husbands? Why wouldn't you be seeing snakes coming to sleep with you? Why wouldn't you be seeing familiar or unfamiliar persons coming to sleep with you? Because your, your pastor is a second in command to Satan. You, you are also a second in command to Satan. So everything in his kingdom is what you'll be going through in your life. He came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's what will be happening in your life because you don't belong to the kingdom of light. You belong to the kingdom of darkness. You have resisted the grace of God that is teaching us to live righteously. You resisted it and you, you accepted the perverted grace that, that permits sin. And you are now a slave of Satan. You are a second in command of him. You are a son of hell doing his bidding and yet speaking in tongues, going to church, preaching the gospel, but you are doing the bidding of the devil. Write this down. It is very dangerous to live this. There are no words to describe the consequence of living in sin. Honestly, there, there are no words. Maybe when we get to eternity, you will not realize the consequence. You can never enjoy this life 
leaving it as a second in command to Satan. You can never enjoy this life living the life as a second in command to Satan. It's impossible. Nobody enjoys this life living it as a second in command to Satan. You can't. That's why Jesus came to terminate the slavery of sin.